What's up guys, this is Ru Castro. Welcome back to the channel. And today I bring you a quick behind the retouch video. And in this video, I intend to walk you through my entire process retouching a studio portrait from beginning to end. Where we're gonna take this image from this to this. Once in Capture One, the first adjustment I make is to the white balance. Uh, and before going in and manually switching the Calvin uh, number, I go in and play around with the modes since I didn't take this image just to get an idea of how Josh shot this image. Uh, and then I do go in and manually play around with the dial itself. And in this instance, I ended up landing right around 5700 Calvin as that gives the center of the image uh, fairly natural skin tones and they don't look too warm or too cool. My next step is to decrease the shadows in the black of this image. And I do that by going to the dynamic range tool and increasing the shadow just a bit and bringing out some of that tone and then moving to the levels tool and reducing the blacks by pulling in each of these knobs uh, in addition, this photo you can see has this vignetting on the edges. So I go to the vignetting tool, reduce that amount of darkness just a bit. Next, uh, I want to make some changes to the skin tone in Joshua's face. And in this specific instance, I am going to focus on the center area of the face. And I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to be able to highlight just that area of the skin color and select that range of color. Then I do play around with the hue and the saturation, reduce just a bit of that intensity. Because this image was a self portrait, it wasn't completely in focus. So I am going to increase the sharpening by increasing the amount and the radius of the sharpening tool just a bit. Now it's time to get this image over to Photoshop. And we do this by right clicking on the thumbnail and selecting pack as an EIP and then doing another right click and select edit with Photoshop. And in this instance, I make sure I select a 16 bit for my image. Uh, once in Photoshop, the first thing I'm gonna do for the sake of the video is do an empty layer and do some markings of the type of adjustments I am going to do throughout this retouching. As you can see here, I am highlighting the areas that I know I have to blend in better together. Uh, and normally these are the ones that are going from this purplish pink color over to the skin tone. Uh, right now it has a very strong edge where the light ends. So I wanna make sure we smooth that out throughout the retouch. Now with the light blue color, I am going to start marking the areas where I want to make sure I dodge. And these are darker patches of skin throughout the face that we wanna make sure we even out with the rest of the skin tone. Even though in some areas we're going to even out to the lighter tones of blues or lighter tones of purple and pink. Uh, but you can see these are definitely darker spots or like patches of skin throughout. And now with black, I'm going to annotate the areas where I want to create some burn or darken the image. And I will primarily be doing some burning to the edges of the face. Uh, to be able to create some more contour and more dimension to the face itself. Now let's jump right into the retouch. And we'll start out by removing all of the blemishes right on the background layer. And what I am going to use is the patch tool. This is just a tool of my preference to start highlighting any areas where I see blemishes and replacing it with pieces of clean skin. Uh, you can also accomplish this using the clone stamp tool, uh, the patch tool, and the healing brush. There is no right or wrong answer to this one. It comes down to preference. Uh, I believe that the patch tool gives me the ability to be more precise, uh, so I tend to lean that way personally. And now we just repeat it through every single blemish. Just be aware that this does require quite a bit of patience. Uh, I am going to speed it up uh, in the process just so you guys aren't watching to this for the next 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, but just practice patience. If you can uh, just move from one place in the face to another, come back to it. Uh, just do it at your own pace uh, and don't rush it.
Now for the next stage uh, of the retouch, we're gonna move into frequency separation. And the first thing I am going to do is run my frequency separation action where I separate the colors and the texture into two different layers and work in each of them individually. The first thing I'm going to do is go to the high frequency or the texture layer and utilize the patch tool to remove this little piece of hair. The only reason I'm doing this first is just because it's distracting me. Uh, I don't think that you can start working on the top layer, bottom layer, there's no right or wrong answer. I just did this specific hair and a couple little more blemishes here and there just because they were a, bit, a little bit distracting. Just as a note, I have included a free download link to this action. It will be the first link on the description below. Now I'm going to transition into the lower frequencies and I don't work on the low frequency layer itself but rather that corrections layer right in between the high frequency and low frequency. This allows me to be able to do work that's non-destructive and be able to remove it if necessary at any moment if we go overboard. And now I'll be using the brush tool with a flow of 2% to start painting in colors uh, to start matching the tones across the entire face. So we're taking samples from areas of skin and painting across in other areas where the colors may be off. For example, in the forehead, right in the center, we had a little bit of a dark patch. So we want to take some of that lighter color and paint it in. And we're going to do this and repeat it throughout the entire face. And as we go, you will notice that I continue to create new layers in between my low frequency and my high frequency. This functions as additional correction layers. And this gives me the ability that if I ever go too much in any given effect with the brush, I can either go ahead and delete the layer or reduce the opacity or erase some of the brush strokes without affecting some of the other layers below that I had already considered to be good adjustments so far. And now I'm gonna switch back to the high frequency layer and actually apply more time into this and remove some of the blemishes that we still have left and some other imperfections in the texture. Uh, and in this instance, you will notice that I duplicated the high frequency layer uh, just so that I can continue to work non-destructively. In case I go too far, I have the ability to reduce the opacity. And you will see me do this later on in the video. And once again, I am back to the patch tool just happens to be my tool of choice. And I'm just looking for any imperfections in the texture. And the one thing I do suggest doing is keep your target where you're moving to get a new source of texture as close as possible to the original selection, as you want the pattern of the texture to still be very similar. And now I'm going back to the low frequency once again, as I notice that there still are many patches of skin tone that are still on the darker side. And we can do a little bit of a better job of smoothing out by blending in the colors and painting in more of the lighter colors. For example, right on the left eye here, we can bring more of that pink over to that dark part, patch of skin right on the edge of the eye and the side of the hairline. Now, going back to the high frequency, I'm gonna do a little bit of a different technique. Instead of using the patch tool, now I'm gonna focus on blending in some of the texture. And the tool I use to accomplish this is the clone stamp tool. And I'm gonna set it to an opacity of 50%. And what I'm gonna do is select a source close to the areas where I wanna blend in the texture a little, and just briefly go over to start smoothing it out just a bit. This is where we're gonna sort out some of the edges of the color pink as it meets the skin tone right above the nose and on the edges of the forehead towards the left side.
And as you can see, I often switch between high frequency and low frequency. And this just happens to be part of my process as I keep noticing little things that may need adjustments while working on something else. And also keeps it interesting enough so you don't get bored of just doing the same thing over and over and over, but rather switch from one thing to the next to keep yourself entertained. Now the next step is going to be to start focusing on dodging and burning. And here I am using an action from Retouching Academy or from the Retouching Academy panel. Uh, and we're going to start by doing some dodging and burning right onto the curved layers. And I will keep the visual aid enabled, which throws this black and white kind of an overlay over the image that really allows you to see the light and the darks. And the first thing I'm going to do is grab my brush with a 2% uh, flow and an opacity of 100 and focus on brightening up any dark spaces I see throughout the image. This may also be considered micro dodging and burning as we focus on lighting up even the smallest of patches in the skin that have different color tones. This works in addition to frequency separation to be able to adjust at an, on a lighting level, not on a color level, the differences in tones. After we do this section of dodging and burning, we will then do another layer of dodging and burning, where we're gonna focus on the contouring of the actual shape of the face. Once again, here I run the dodge and burn action, but in this instance, I am gonna continue to use it in a little bit of a different way. I am still gonna use my brush set to a 2% flow and 100% opacity, but this instance, I'm gonna be using much larger brush, focusing on highlighting the brighter areas of the image. So you can see I'm getting a pretty big brush to go over the forehead to really accentuate the highlight in the forehead, the bridge of the nose and the cheekbones area. And here is a great example of why I like to work non-destructively. For example here, I did a second layer of dodging and burning on purpose, and now I went a little bit too far in, in the dodging. And as you can see, it was a little bit too bright. So now I have the ability of going in and reducing the opacity for the dodge area. Now we shift gear to the burning layer, and here we're gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, with the burn tool, what we're predominantly gonna do is burn the edges of the face, just to darken them a little, and this will create a little bit more of a focus and draw the focus into the eyes area. And at the same time, provide a bit of contour to Josh's face and make it look slightly slimmer.
And now I'm just quickly going to review that notes layer we did at the beginning. Just to make sure that I did all the dodging and burning we intended to do from the start. And now I'm going to create a new blank layer. And in this layer, we're going to paint some individual hair strands to the beard and the areas where the hair looks a little bit light, uh, just to fill it in and make it look a little bit more full throughout the entire face. Uh, now for this technique, uh, what I'll be doing is just simply using the brush tool. Uh, and there's some specific instructions that will get you to get this result. This is something I probably learned like five years ago at a tutorial from Learn. Uh, I'll make sure to link that down in the description if you'd like to reference it. But all I'm doing right now is just using my brush tool to literally paint in individual hair strands. Start utilizing adjustment layers to start making changes to the lighting and contrast of this image. I will start out by adding a curve adjustment layer. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a small S curve that is going to boost the contrast of this image a little. So I'm going to pull from the bottom blacks and pull them in towards the right and bring the brights, which is the top point of the curve, in towards the left and create a slight S. And throughout the process, I noticed that this was making it a bit too dark. So instead, I decided to still utilize this adjustment layer. But now I'm going to use it just to increase the brightness of my subject in this instance, Josh. So what I'm going to do is leave the curve as it was and only focus on the center point of the curve adjustment and increase it towards the top just to bring a little bit of brightness to the overall image. Uh, but through, throughout doing this, I noticed that I didn't want the background to change too much. So I am going to ask a mask to this layer. And then I'm going to use one of my favorite tools in Photoshop, and that is color range selection. This tool allows me to make a selection based on a color range. In this instance, I'm going to go ahead and use the background since it's the closest solid color throughout the whole image. I'm going to select the blues and then I'm going to press on command shift to be able to add more colors. And what I'll do is after I run the selection and hit enter, I have to remember that I need to invert the mask because at the moment the selection was for the background and I want to flip it so that the subject is what is brighter in this image. Now I'm going to select the brush tool and set it to 100% opacity and 100% flow and select the color white just to unmask any little traces of like the t-shirt or areas within the subject that might have been affected by the mask. Now I'm going to work on increasing the contrast of this image by adding a black and white adjustment layer and changing the blending mode of this layer to soft light. In addition, I am going to reduce the opacity to about five to 10% and visually just look and see where I would like to leave the contrast of the photo by tweaking the opacity as necessary. This is a great way of adding contrast in a non-destructive way to an image. It gives you a lot of versatility. Since you also have a mask, if I wanted to, I have the ability to go beyond and mask or unmask certain areas of the image based on the look I would like to see. Now I want to bring some brightness to the eyes. They are fairly dark in this photo. So what I'm going to do is create an adjustment layer, a curve adjustment layer, and increase the middle point a little bit higher just to bring some brightness. And then I'm going to invert my mask and then use my brush tool with a 10% opacity and start brightening up the area of the eyes by unmasking it little by little. I utilize another action from Retouching Academy, and that is the glowing skin um, action. And what this does is that it brightens the brighter areas of the skin tone. In this instance, because the only area we have true skin tone is the center of the photo, it's going to brighten some of the forehead and nose area. And what I'm going to do is utilize that color selection range to select the color range of the forehead and the brighter areas of the skin tone. So I don't have to manually paint these in using a brush. I have the desired selection 
go ahead and click OK. And then I will go to my mask and to unmask it, I will do the inverse shortcut, which on a Mac is Command I or Control I on a PC. As you can see, this brightens this area a bit more and it gives you that natural kind of low -y skin tone. Uh, because it's a little bit too harsh, I did decrease the opacity of this tool by about 50%. Now I'm adding a blue saturation layer, and this is intended to decrease the blue saturation in the background. So once again, we're going to go ahead and utilize the color selection or the color range selection to select and highlight the blues and click OK. And once we do, this is going to unmask only the area of the blues of the background. And now we can tweak the saturation as needed for the background. The only reason I'm doing this is because in the original photo, I thought the blue in the background was just taking too much from the subject and taking a bit of the attention away from him. So I'm just going to decrease some of the brightness so that the focus is still Josh or the main subject. And now to finalize this image, the next step is to add some sharpening. I will be using the Retouching Academy uh, Sharpen Image Action. And what I'll do is create a full sharpen layer for this photo and decrease the opacity to about 20% or so, because we only want to add a little bit more emphasis to the sharpening. And I will also create a second sharpen layer, but this one is going to be specifically for the eyes because on this image, the eyes weren't 100% in focus, uh, I'm gonna try to bring them a little bit more into focus or at least create that illusion by adding sharpening. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a mask completely filled in black and then use my brush tool at 20% opacity to start painting out the areas of the eyes. And I will do this a few times until I think they're sharp enough to give that illusion of being in focus. Plus also unmask some of the mouth area since the eyes and the mouth will usually be in the same plane of focus. So they will both be just as focused, on, at least in this instance where someone's looking straight at the camera. And that is it. This is usually what goes into a full retouch for me. Uh, now let me show you a full before and after of this image. Cool. If you're still here watching all the way to the end, let me tell you, thank you. I greatly appreciate your time. I hope you got some nuggets of insight and you were able to take something away from this walkthrough. Once again, thank you. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. Like always, deuces.